Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Today, we will celebrate the festival of the ascension of our Lord, the day that he returned to heaven. He withdraws his physical presence from us, but he promises that he is with us always to the very end of the age. Today, we worship our risen and ascended Lord. Is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peace, Mosiah, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Today is a day of celebration, grief, and anticipation. We celebrate our Lord's triumph and reign. We grieve that he is not physically present with us. We anticipate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And we celebrate that his promise to always be with us remains and will never fade away. Through Christ, though Christ is ascended on high and is seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning over all creation, there have been times when we have lived as though we rule and reign over our own lives. We have lived as though Christ were too far away to matter. But our Heavenly Father invites us to return to him, confess our sins, and receive his forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we, we confess, confess to you that, that we are sinful and unclean. Forgive, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so, so that, that we walk in your perfect, perfect way and, and delight in your, your perfect, perfect will. will. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die and rise for you. Christ is ascended and all things are under his feet, including sin, death, and the devil. On account of Christ's saving work and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are forgiven, forgiven and, and restored. restored. Alleluia. Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son sent us to the ends of the earth with the gospel and promised always to be with us. 
embolden us to spread the good news of Jesus' death, resurrection, ascension, and return. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from Acts chapter 1. Jesus ascends into heaven and promises the Holy Spirit. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then he gathered around him, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson from Ephesians chapter 1. Christ is risen and ascended. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incompar incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above the rule and, and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, 
but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you like uh, books or movies, perhaps the thing you like most is when there is a happy ending. I personally am okay watching a movie that's sad as long as I, I know it's going to have a happy ending. If it doesn't, I usually don't watch that movie again. Most people like happy endings. We want to see good things happen to the characters and the stories that we like. On Ascension Day, we have a happy ending. A happy ending to the mission of Jesus. His mission, his ministry, as he ascends into heaven in power and glory. And he says to us, I am with you always, to the very end of time. And you are my witnesses to the ends of the earth. The festival of Ascension helps us celebrate these things that Christ said to us that day. First, the Ascension marked the ending of his mission. Jesus had willingly come to earth as a little baby. He willingly took on that human nature and lived as one of us. Endured all the things that we endure, yet never sinned. He lived for 33 years on this earth perfectly for you. We need that because we don't live 33 seconds without some kind of sin popping into our mind, showing itself in our heart. And even if that doesn't happen, we live in this sinful human nature continuously while we are here on this earth. 
Jesus earned this righteousness for us. It was hard work. But he said, these are my words that I spoke to you while I am still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. After his resurrection, Jesus spent the next 40 days showing many, many people that he was alive. The scripture says, And Jesus led the disciples out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. After those 40 days of assuring people that he was alive, he showed the disciples where he went, that he went into heaven, ascended before their eyes. He does not leave it a mystery to them. He tells them what's going to happen. He tells them to go and wait in the city for the gift of the Holy Spirit. He tells them he is with them always. He tells them of their mission to take his word to the ends of the earth. His word of forgiveness, his word of forgiveness that had strengthened them, reassured them that they have this sure promise of heaven. Take that message to the ends of the earth. He said to them, this is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. We needed that witness. We needed that message to be shared to the ends of the earth, to us today. For we daily sin and return to our Lord in repentance and in faith. For our doubts, for our concerns, for our wonders, for our worries. Jesus lived perfectly. And he took all of our sin to the cross. He suffered and died for us, rose from the dead and ascended into heaven that we now know that we have eternal life and look forward to that great day when Christ will come again. We see that on Ascension Day. The promises fulfilled. The mission fulfilled. When Jesus said it is finished, forgiveness is finished done and complete. When he says, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, we trust that promise that we will be witnesses of his name. And he will be with us always. The second thing that we think about on Ascension Day, that, that's that second ending, if you will, after the ending of his mission, is, is the ending of his physical presence with us. Jesus has removed his physical presence. We can't look around and see him with our eyes. We know through faith that he is with us. Other people need to know that he is here too. For example, uh, for, for years there was search for polio vaccine. When it finally happened, uh, some parts of the world, people didn't know about it yet. The disease still went on, and they lived as if nothing had changed. In, in this day and age, we sit here and wait for a, a vaccine for this coronavirus. And someone in a, uh, in a lab, let's say in, in New York City, may find a vaccine. But we won't know about it until someone shares the news. We won't know about it till someone brings it to us. So it is with the message of forgiveness in Christ. If it's to be helpful for people, they need to know it. They need to know what it is. And for it to be helpful, someone had to bring, it's to bring the message to them. Someone brought the message to you, dear friend. Maybe it was a parent, a relative, teacher, a friend, a pastor, someone shared the word with you, and by God's grace you believe. 
And by God's grace, you are forgiven, restored, and promised heaven. Someone brought the message to you. Paul says he prays that their hearts and minds of the people in Ephesus, that their hearts and minds may be opened, see the great riches, the wonderful mercy of God. We are delivering that same message today. We pray, like Paul, that people's hearts are open. People's hearts are opened and they treasure, believe this message. We are in the delivery business, not the manufacturing business. For example, uh, trucks, UPS trucks, you see them all over. They, they deliver the goods to your house. The UPS truck did not make those boxes. They're simply the delivery person. We are the delivery person, the delivery people of the gospel. We don't make our own salvation. We don't make up this story. We don't make up what we think people need to hear. No, we, we share with them the word of God. We share with them faith and forgiveness in Christ alone. The same message that has been shared with us. Take that message to them. Jesus says, you are my witnesses. He doesn't say to the disciples, you'll be my observers. You are, you're just watching this happen and it's interesting. Make note of it. No. He says, you'll be my witnesses. When you're a witness to something, it changes you. It changes your life. They were witnesses, and it changed their life. Witnesses are also called upon usually to tell what they have seen and heard. Jesus' disciples were called upon to do that too, to go and tell people what they had seen and heard, what they had seen Jesus do and heard him say. They knew the promises. He fulfilled all of them. And there was hope and forgiveness and salvation for all people. To be a witness of Christ today, you to be a witness of Christ today, it is the same glorious task, the same glorious privilege of going and, and telling people what you have seen and heard, what the scriptures have taught you about your Savior, how he has forgiven you and he has forgiven them because he has promised forgiveness to all. Until he comes again, that will be our purpose, to be his witnesses, sharing the gospel, by God's grace, making disciples of Christ to the ends of the earth. Clearly, though, we can't do this without power of God. We need that power of God. Jesus gives us a third end to think about. He says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Christ and his power remains with us to the end of the age. His power, his Holy Spirit in our heart, the desire to share the message, the desire to learn the message more ourselves. All this empowered by Christ and his Holy Spirit to the very end of the age. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit to us to make us witnesses of Christ. In baptism, when you hear the gospel, God promises you that through that gospel message and word and sacrament, he creates faith. Through the gospel and sacrament of Holy Communion, he strengthens faith in our hearts. Through the hearing of this gospel message, the mission and purpose of Christ, and the fulfillment of that mission, faith is strengthened in our hearts today as well. As Christians, we are clothed by the Holy Spirit. When people 
look at us, they, they know. They can see our faith in our words and in our actions and in the way we live because we are clothed with Christ. This is empowered by the gospel. Paul says faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. You may wonder, well, what can God really do through me? I'm just one person stuck in my house a lot of the time right now. What can God use me? But through those very few disciples on that first Pentecost, which we'll hear about next week, thousands came to faith. You don't have to worry if it's one or a thousand that comes to faith from your witness. That's up to the Holy Spirit. But just be the witness to those that you can in the communications that you have, in the times that you share with family and friends on the phone or in online meetings, however you're doing that these days. Remember, remember the power of Christ and be his witnesses. Jesus says, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The disciples did that, and they saw the glories of Pentecost. We, by the grace of God, know that we are clothed with Christ, and that he promises. His word does not return to him empty. It accomplishes the purpose for which he sent it, and he sends that word through you and through me, and he promises that even though I can't see you in front of me today, I can trust that the power of this message is the power of God. And that power can reach your heart and your soul. And that power changes your life, strengthens your faith. It's the gift of God. It's the grace of God. It's by his power alone that this happens for us all. Everyone needs to hear this message because we like happy endings. On that last day when Jesus returns to earth, comes again, take all who believe in him to heaven. We want everyone to believe in him. Now we know God has promised, God has said that there will be some who do not believe. He knows. He wishes, he wants all people to be saved, but he knows there will be some who reject him and are cast out from his presence. But we don't know who those people are. And God hasn't told us to worry about that. He's told us to be his witnesses, to know that he is with us to the end of the age, to know that he has completed his mission, to share his word. The ascension of Jesus reminds us, go and do what Christ has said. To believe in the power of his mission and forgiveness, to believe in his power to strengthen your witness, and to trust in his presence, his presence with you wherever you go to the end of the age. Christ and his work power, the creation of faith, and the strengthening of faith that this world needs. We pray that Christ makes us effective in our witness, bold in our confession of his name, and faithful in our trust in his promises. In Jesus' name, amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the second article and the explanation. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third, the third day, day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This, this is, is most certainly true. true. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into our world with a mission to seek and to save the lost. Thank you for his life, ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection. Most especially today, we thank you for seating him at your right hand in his ascension. We thank you for we know that Christ is ascended. He, he rules and reigns in glory. Lord, at the end of his earthly mission, Jesus sent his disciples out to the ends of the earth with the mission to be witnesses of his resurrection. Strengthen us as we continue their faithful witness. Embolden all missionaries and evangelists by constantly opening a door for your word to be spoken. We ask this in faith, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, thank you for sending the promised Holy Spirit to guide us in all our ways. Conform our lives to the word of God and transform us by the renewing of our minds. We ask this with boldness, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, we live in a world with imperfect leaders, imperfect laws, and imperfect communities. But we know that all things are under Christ's feet, and he has all power and authority. So we ask for you to send your perfect wisdom to our elected and appointed officials, instill your perfect justice in our lawyers and judges, and bring your perfect hope to our communities. We ask this in hope, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and recovering, those who are hospitalized and homebound. Today, we have a special prayer for Adriana Osario, a friend of Fred and Star in the church. And Adriana is, is a, a young woman who is also a mother and has found out that she now has cancer. We ask for God's healing upon her. Lord Jesus, you know all things. You know that Adriana and you know that she loves you. She is your child and she has faith in you. That faith is helping to keep her strong in this difficult time. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Lord, we also ask that you send your healing hand upon her. Cover her with your love and grace and, and healing. Lord, please do not let this cancer continue, but we ask that, that you cure it. And Lord, we thank you for the faith that you have given her, that no matter what happens, she knows and trusts in you as Savior and Lord. Be with her family, all those who are especially troubled at this time by this. Help them have that same confidence of faith that she is showing. And Lord, on the days when, when she is weak and her faith strained 
because of all of this. Build her up again. Keep her in your love, for you are a faithful, merciful, and healing God. We ask this in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. Lord, we ask that you strengthen all those who are sick and give them patience in their afflictions. We ask this in love, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Finally, Lord, we ask for your comfort for all those who grieve the death of loved ones. Grant them peace as they hope in the resurrection to eternal life. We ask this knowing that Christ is ascended. He is returning soon. Amen. Let us join in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, keep us firm in the true faith as we share his grace and await his return, that we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for being here for worship today. We pray that this service online continues to be a blessing to you. Thank you for your faithfulness in, in watching and worshiping with us. We ask God to continue to bless you with health and safety. For your Lord is ascended. God be with you. And also with you.